30 Minutes of Power. Welcome to Top 30 Minutes of Power, a podcast dedicated to encourage, educate, and inspire godly women to pursue their passions. With hosts, Jory O'Neill and Nicole Salter. Thanks for coming. Let's get ready to power up. Welcome to 30 Minutes of Power, a podcast to empower women. Here, we believe that we are powerful beings and we will use our power to empower others. Can I get an amen? Amen, amen. Yeah. So listen, uh, we have a little family time tonight. We're going to have a really encouraging session. We're going to have some fun. So if you're driving, keep your hands on the wheels. We'll get ready to laugh. Get ready to have an encouraging and incredibly entertaining time because you're speaking for this evening. It's none other than, than the incredible, the dynamic, amazing Nicole Sota. Yes. What's up, Nicole? How you doing? Hello, hello, hello. Hi, everyone. My name is Nicole Salter, and I will be your speaker for tonight. And I would love to continue the discussion on history creates her story. However, I am going to put a spin on it. And the question that I want to ask you is, how does your history create a positive story? How will you use your history to create a positive story? For the past five weeks, my lovely partner and wonderful friend has done a five-part series with us entitled History Determines Herself. And so we were challenged to look deeper into our past to see how it affects our lives today, right? And so I don't know about you all, but for me, it made me examine my life. It made me separate the negative from the positive, and it made me take all of my negatives and try and turn them into positive things that I've done wrong in my past jobs. How can I use those experiences to make my life better now? And then also things that have happened in my family life as well. How can I use those things to make my life better today? Right? So today, what I would like us to focus on is our mistakes and our mess ups. How can we make them better? How can we live with them? How can we live through them? And how can we finish what we've started? So I'm going to start out small and I'm going to put myself on blast because that is the way we learn, right? We learn from other people's stories, other people's mistakes. And so this is a lesson that is just taking me way too long to learn. However, I live in a house with my mom, my grandmother-in-law, my husband, and my two children. Yes, there are four generations in my house. And now I know you guys are like, oh my gosh, your house is full and it is definitely crazy. Yes, you're right. My house is about 5,000 square feet. Everybody has a corner so that when we get on each other's nerves, we can go somewhere and hide from each other. My mother-in-law, because she lives with us and she is not working. She is 85, God bless her, but she is not working. And she's decided that she's going to do our laundry every week, which is great, right? I'm sure you people that are single moms or where your husbands work a lot and you have to be home and you're like, oh my gosh, I wish somebody would do the laundry for me. Yes, it is a great thing to have her to have her help in doing the laundry. So every Thursday, my mother-in-law says to me, don't forget to remind the children to bring their clothes downstairs. And I say to her, yes, okay. As soon as they come down for breakfast, I'll make sure they bring their clothes. It happens (laughs) about 80% of the time, but it happens. I know I'm horrible. I have someone that wants to wash my clothes for me and I just take advantage. I know, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. Grandma, forgive me. However, so on a good day, right? That Thursday morning comes, she reminds me to tell the kids and I tell the kids to bring their clothes down. They bring them down and grandma washes the clothes for me and she folds them and she puts them in these baskets. Everybody has a separate laundry basket. So there are four baskets at the bottom of the stairs after my mother-in-law has finished washing clothes. When the kids come home from school, we are doing homework 
And after we do homework, we are having family time. My block that I live on, it is called Butterfly Kiss. And with a street like that, everybody has to be friendly. And so we are always outside. We're riding bikes. We're playing with water balloons or we're doing um, sidewalk chalk. There's always something happening outside. And so normally on a Thursday, after my mother-in-law has washed all the clothes and she's folded them and put them in the basket, we come inside after, we're f- after we finish playing, we eat dinner, and then I look at the clothes at the bottom of the stairs and I say to myself, oh my gosh, I'm too tired to do this. And I go upstairs. Yes. Nine times out of 10, that is what happens. I know I am horrible. I, or I'll say to myself, I look at the clothes and I'll say to myself, all right, I'll come back down. And who can guess what happens when I say to myself, I'll come back down. I never make it back downstairs. The clothes sit there for days. And then finally Sunday comes and I'm like, okay, I should take these upstairs. And so now I know you're like, oh, that's okay. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's four days. You know, you're good. And I take them upstairs. Yeah, no. After four days, I take them upstairs. And what do I do? I put them in a loft in my, right outside my bedroom. (laughs) They sit in the loft inside the basket. And then when I wake up the next morning and I go downstairs, it's Thursday again. And I still haven't put the clothes away. I know I'm horrible. So here we are, Thursday number two in the month. My mother-in-law is going through the whole cycle again. Don't forget to get the clothes. Don't forget to tell the kids to bring them downstairs. And so the same thing happens that Thursday evening. But this time... I dumped the clothes on the bench in my room because we all know that bedroom furniture is not for sitting, right? It's for hanging clothes on, right? Like if you have a treadmill on in your living room or in your bedroom, nine times out of 10, it's full with clothes. It does not have any use except for drying the towels that are wet from the bathroom, (laughs) which is horrible, right? And so we do, I do this for maybe about a month. And then at the end of the month, it is now taking me about two hours to put clothes away instead of 20 to 30 minutes, right? And some of you are probably like, Nicole, what is the point to this story? So the reason (laughs) I am telling you this story is because my mistake in all of this is lying to myself, right? And telling myself that I don't have 30 minutes to put clothes away. Or I'm too tired to put clothes away. And so instead of me getting the strength and the energy and forcing myself to do the things that I don't want to do as simple as putting clothes away, I wait until the end of the month where now it takes me two hours, maybe even three hours, because there's so much clothes that have to be put away. The clothes that I have dumped in random places are now unfolded. So I have to fold them again. And then I have to constantly talk to my children and tell them, put this away, put that away, put this away, put that away. And they're whining and complaining because now they have four loads of laundry to put away instead of only one. And so they're like, mommy, this takes too long. I don't want to do this. And that's just a whole nother headache, right? And the reason I'm telling you this story is because I want you to make sure that when you are examining your life, right, you are not letting the little things keep you from being great. Some questions that I have for you are, What excuses do you make for yourself to not finish your personal goals? It could be something as small as doing the dishes. If you constantly leave all of the dishes in the sink, they build up and they build up and they build up. And before you know it, you have dishes not only in the sink, but on the counter, on the floor, on the stove. And when you look at it, you don't even know where to begin because it is so much, right? 
One of the biggest excuses many of us make is I'm too tired. I work hard and I'm allowed to have a potato day, right? For those of you that don't know, a potato day is the day that you don't want to do anything. You don't want to see anybody. You don't want to smell anybody. You just want to lay down on your bed or sit down on your sofa and watch ghetto TV. Or you want to watch the news or whatever kind of TV you like. Well, this may be true, but don't let this attitude stop you from reaching your potential, right? Don't let your screw ups from the past stop you from doing better. Yes, me and this laundry issue, it is a screw up because at the end of the day, it is taking away time from me doing everything else that I could be doing in that three hour span. Okay, I have several businesses going right now. I have three vending machines that I have to keep track of. I have an Etsy store. I have an Amazon store. I'm a realtor. I have I participate in a lot of things in my community. And so me taking three hours to work on one thing as simple as putting laundry is not very effective. It is not a very effective way for me to use my time. And some of you might be like, Nicole, you know, that situation just doesn't pertain to me. I don't know where you're going with this. I'm asking you to examine your life, right? And find the little things. We're going to keep it small. We're not trying to to conquer the world tomorrow. We're going to keep it small. Examine your life and find the little things where you mess up, right? I mess up on laundry. I can say that. That's, That's my small mess up. Find the little things where you mess up and the little things that keep you from being productive with your time, right? The point of this is for me to encourage you and not, don't let yourself get tired or don't let yourself build excuses about being tired so that you leave things until later and then they become worse. When you examine yourself, Try and cut your mistakes out altogether. Try and learn from them. We shouldn't make excuses for ourselves. How many excuses do you make for work? Do you make excuses for work? Why is it easy for you to try and please your boss and it's not easy for you to try and please yourself? Right? That's what we want to focus on. How is the negative, how are the negative impacts in our history creating? our story. When your supervisors tell you that you need to keep your classroom clean, or you need to keep your office clean, or you need to keep your your cubicle clean, why is it that you make that a priority? But when it's time to keep your own bedroom clean, it becomes a chore. And the first thing you say is, I'm too tired. I don't want to do this. Right? If we are doing things for other people, we should also make it a priority to do things for ourselves. If we are trying to do things to make other people great, we should also make it a priority to do things to make us great. What is the point in making everyone else great when we can't even focus on ourselves? What sacrifices do you have to make? Are you able to make sacrifices without hurting anyone else? Are you able to treat yourself as good as everyone, as you treat everyone else, right? And so some things that we might have to work on are working past when we mess up. How do you get past messing up? How do you keep on moving forward, right? That is the question for today. Yeah, so my dad said it starts with your mindset um, in in addressing some of these questions. How do you get past messing up and how am I able to treat myself as well as I treat everyone else? I think um, I think I feel convicted when you mentioned the thing about the cubicle at work because I looked at my desk at work and um, it's a hot mess. Um, I'm, I teach phys ed, so my desk is not of importance to me, but I had like papers from September, October, chilling on there in the corners with grades on them um, that I neglected to return to the kids because I kept forgetting. 
not making it a priority. And then um, in addition to that, uh, I just had a lot of stuff just all over the desk. And I was like, you know what? If anyone ever comes in this office and they like, oh, whose desk is this? I'm going to feel shame. I'm going to feel embarrassed. So let me go ahead and clean this uh, this desk up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to edit that out too. Um, so I'm like, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and clean this desk up. So I cleaned it up and it took me all of like seven minutes, honestly, because most of it was just straight papers. I was like, seven minutes, that didn't take long. I could have been done this months ago. Um, yet when I come home, my room is a hot mess. <laughs> uh, I got baskets of clean clothes. I got baskets of dirty clothes. And, and, and they, they're not in the same basket, thank God. Uh, they two separate <laughs> baskets, but they're real close to each other. So sometimes the dirty clothes gets to the top. I'm telling them myself, the dirty clothes get so high that sometimes a sock or two falls over into the clean clothes. And I'm like, I got smell stuff now. <laughs> uh, like, yes. is, this, is this good or yes. bad? Um, yes. So I, I dig that. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear more about how I'm supposed to get past this because <laughs> that's where I am. Like, like other areas of my life, I'm like, yes, we doing it. Yes, I'm high-fiving myself. Like, yeah, thank you, God, for the victory in, in this area over here. And then like, yeah, I can't I can't tell the clean draws from the dirty ones. So right, right. Yeah. That's funny. That's funny. So how do we move past the the bad things that have happened in our lives right in the past first thing we want to do is al allow yourself to feel awful about it like allow yourself the guilt allow yourself to realize that you were in the wrong allow yourself to apologize um for whatever it is that that you have done but you don't want to wallow in it right because when we wallow in it we stay there and we don't become great we want to realize it and we want to move on. We don't want to stay there. And second, what we want to do is we want to keep things in perspective, right? So realize what happened, right? Talk about, even if you have to talk to yourself, talk about what happened. Talk about the different ways that you could have fixed it. You know, if you showed up late for work or for a presentation, you showed up late, don't make any excuses apologize for showing up late and give the banging presentation don't focus on you showing up late and they not liking you because you show up late focus on what the project is focus on it and complete it okay number three confront your worst case scenario then let it go it could have been worse it could have been a situation where you didn't make it to the meeting, right? It could have been, in my case, with the laundry, right? It could have been where I never put clothes away. And then two months later, I have to put everybody's clothes away. And now I have to fold everybody's clothes and I have to sort through everybody's clothes, right? The situation can always be worse. Let it go and keep it moving. Do not harp on it. Step number four, apologize, apologize for what you did. Don't overdo it. That's another way to, to harp on things, right? If we keep saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Stop bringing up what you did negatively. Move on and start working on the positive. Start working on making things better. Step number five, create a game plan for next time. Every Thursday, <laughs> here we go with this laundry. I say to myself, I'm going to take these upstairs and I'm going to make my children put theirs away. I'm going to put my, myself and my husband's clothes away and I won't have to think about it. And it's going to take me all but 20 minutes. And every Friday morning, I have to wake up and say, Lord, please forgive me. <laughs> Because it doesn't always happen, right? However, I am still keeping hope in myself and I still have that game plan. I will let you know next week how this Thursday goes. <laughs> okay, 
but create a game plan for yourself so that these things don't keep happening. Now, I'm, I am joking with the laundry story, right? But it is a, a serious issue. I mean, it's not something where I'm not, I'm going to lose my job or, or my livelihood or anything. But it is an issue for me that I need to figure out because with all of the things that I have going on, my time can definitely be utilized in a better manner. And if I have my game plan ready, that game plan will spill into everything else that I need to do in my life, right? Step number six. This is step number six. Take better care of yourself. In my situation, taking better care of myself would be making sure that I follow through on my game plan. Not just creating a game plan and letting it sit to the side, but also following through with it. That is how this particular situation with the laundry, that is how I can take better care of myself by following through on this game plan. Step number seven, earn trust through your actions, right? Not just words. So for me, I'm not necessarily earning anyone's trust, right? However, I need to earn trust in myself and I need to constantly tell myself that I can do better and I can make this happen. And if I want my life to go further along from where it is, I have to do something better. I have to do things that will put trust in myself to be a better person, put trust in myself to be able to stick to my schedule and stick to the different commitments that I have, right? If I can't trust myself, can I trust anybody else to trust me? No, why? Why do I want you to trust me if I can't trust myself? So we need to build that up in ourselves. Even something as simple as laundry and dishes and I now have a, a cool little coffee station in my house. And I like to make sure that my coffee station is neat because that is the first place I go every morning. And I just want to be able to pick up a coffee and put it in the, in the Keurig and press it without looking, right? I need to be able to do this blindly because in the morning, I'm kind of blind. <laughs> <coughs> I am not a morning person. So I need to be able to do all of this stuff without much thinking. <laughs> okay. And so keeping your schedule and taking better care of yourself and sticking to your game plan, those are all ways for you to trust yourself. Don't harp on the negative. Focus on the positive. Focus on how you can create a better situation for yourself, a better situation for your life. Something that Jory has taught me, which I absolutely love, I'm not perfect at it, however, I do do it, um, is journaling. Write down at the end of the night, write down everything that you've accomplished. Write down the things that you didn't accomplish. Write down the things that you want to accomplish. And whenever your week ends, whether it ends Sunday or it ends Friday, just go over your week. Look at the things that you've done. Look at the things that you didn't do. How can I be a better person next week? How can I be a better person with my family next week? How can I be a better person with my job next week? How can I be a better friend next week? Who is it that I need to reach out to, right? That's something that I've been trying to do. Um, I remember at my church, like a big complaint in the elderly community was that a lot of people, once the, the elderly community left the church, no one reached out to them. <clears throat> and it got to a point where someone's husband died and she didn't even want us at her funeral. At his funeral, I mean, because no one contacted them when they were not in church. And this is all before COVID, y'all. So we had no excuse. <laughs> we had no excuse. And so <clears throat> now I try to make sure that those elderly people that are out there that have no one to talk to, I try and make sure I call them at least once a month. Does it always happen? No. However, I'm pretty sure if I put my trust in myself, right? And I have, and I have the, 
the list of people, right? I can do that. And so someone said, when I'm talking about elderly people, who am I talking about? Um, in my case in particular, I'm talking about like my 96 year old grandmother who cannot leave the house. I'm talking about my aunt's, my, um, my friend's aunt who is, I feel like she's in her eighties, but she is unable to leave the house and go to church every Sunday. And so to be honest, it doesn't even have to be an elderly person. It can be a young person or exactly homebound folks that you don't see on a regular basis anymore. You know, nine times out of 10, they're not seeing many people reach out to them, make your list of people that do not come to the church anymore, that are not able to come to the church anymore and send a simple text. Hey, just thinking about you, how you doing? You know, and you'd be surprised like how amazing people feel just by you thinking about them, you know? And so this message today was to encourage you, encourage you to take the negative experiences in your life and turn them into positive ones. Do not harp on the negative. Harping on the negative is not going to move you forward. If moving forward is a goal of yours, if moving forward is something you need to do, something you want to do, something you desire, what you need to do is figure out how you can be better. And the way you can be better is by learning from your mistakes, learning from others' mistakes. I'm a big believer in learning from everybody else's mistake because if you made the mistake, why do I have to make it too? I don't need to make it too. Tell me your mistake. Let me learn what you did and I'll do it differently. <laughs> I, don't need to make my, I don't need to make your mistakes. And so I just want to challenge you this week to write down your vision, your goals, your dreams, and figure out how you can be better in those areas next week. What can you do to improve yourself in the upcoming week? I'll be waiting to hear all of your lovely answers on Monday. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. And I thank you for listening. I thank you for coming. This is Nicole Salter signing off. God bless. Thank you for listening. We pray you have been empowered by the message. If you'd like to be a part of the conversation, join our free Facebook group, AZ Iron Sharpens Iron. Every Monday, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, meet us back here for another session of empowerment. Share this episode with another woman who needs to be empowered. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, be an empowered woman using your power to empower others. Don't admit the power.